I hope you like your hamburger today, Andrea. <laughs> All right. The teriyaki burger. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer, and then uh, we'll get started. Uh, I need to mention one announcement, though. Verse test. Verse test will be at 1.15 today. It'll be out. You can't take it during class. At 1.15, it should probably take you three to four minutes to do the verse test. I want you to know there are a lot of blanks. There are, you got to know your verses, okay? There are a lot of blanks. Um, out of Romans 12, 1 and 2, I don't think we put in, uh, maybe put in nine or ten words is all. So that means you got to know it. All right, but I think you guys do know Romans 12, 1 and 2, so that's just pretty good. Um, so it goes from 115 to 215. So, and that also becomes your, do you guys remember? Attendance. That becomes your attendance. All right. Now, um, our three new students, we'll figure that all out. We'll get that all ready to go. And, and by the way, even if you guys think you know Romans 12, 1 and 2, hold off on it because you don't want to mess up. So just, even if you think, oh, I got those two verses. Uh, you might just want, we'll, we'll figure you three out, um, and, and we'll get that all figured out. But from this point on, um, it'll be, uh, and Andrea, you're going to have to, we're going to have to work that out, because when you're watching this, it'll probably be already over uh, past 2.15. So um, uh, we'll figure those, those four things out. But I did want you to know that every class period, there will be a verse test. And that verse test will come on your canvas at what time? And you have for how long? 2.15. You have one hour to do it. What I would recommend is that you do it as soon as class is over. Um, that, that you, or maybe take five minutes to study it, and then, and then boom, right into it. Okay? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I pray that this will be a life-changing class today for every student. And Lord, in our relationships, may we begin, understand the forgiveness that we've received from you through Jesus Christ. Father, may we see that the foundation of all relationships is that understanding of what we've been forgiven of. So Lord, I ask and pray that Matthew 18, Ephesians 4.32, 2 Corinthians 5.18 would take on a meaning that we have never experienced before. But Lord, may we not be hearers of a lecture today. May we be doers of your word today. And I do pray that when we're out on the mission field uh, in Peru or South Korea or, or Uganda, or Philadelphia, or Seattle, that we will not forget what we heard today about how to forgive the church secretary, how to forgive the youth pastor, how to forgive our pastor, how to forgive our spouse, how we forgive elder or deacon so-and-so, or how we forgive sister so-and-so in the lie and the rumor that she started about us. Father, we've got to learn today the importance of forgiveness in relationships and ministry. And Lord, you want these students to learn this more than I even want them to learn it. So may the Spirit of God have freedom. And Father, if the Spirit shows us unforgiveness towards a roommate, a dorm soup, a, a, a student a teacher, faculty, administrator, or, or, or any, anything back home. May we deal with that, too, in, in our relationships here. So to me, Lord, this is really important. Then, Lord, I would like to ask one other thing. The four statements of being a peacemaker. May the students practice these statements in the next seven days. I know they're going to have opportunities. And, Lord... You say in your word that blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Father, I think a lot of Christians 
are causing conflict in America instead of being peacemakers in America. And Lord, may the children of God live up to their name. And may we be peacemakers. So a lot to pray for, Father. A lot of things going on in our life. Keep us healthy. Keep us safe on campus. Be with, continue to be with Dr. Getz and, and us as we listen to the, the awakening this week. And boy, Lord, how the messages have spoken to all of our hearts. And may we be spirit-filled like we heard today. And so, Lord, much to pray about. But I pray that you'll answer these prayers for the cause of Jesus Christ and in the name of Jesus. And God's <laughs> ministers said, <laughs> all right, take your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 9. All right, uh, Brother Bundy's here, so Katie and uh, Max, if you want to just go out and look at you so you get the notes right away, that'll be good. Um, anyone have any questions about anything? We, we all ready to go? Okay, big day, uh, somewhere in the middle of this, I'll have you stand up just to stretch a little bit. Uh, today wasn't the day for refreshments. Uh, and you're still new enough. Now, you got this one in. What's your next project now? What's the next project in class? The book report. The book report. Okay. The one another book. Is there anyone here that does not have that book yet? Okay. A few of you. We want to get that right away. Good book. Hey, by the way, I could see every one of you, male and female, I could see every one of you doing a series in Sunday school. By the way, that's a great Sunday school series, the one and others. You know, and matter of fact, you'll have to limit it. You know, it's like, man, there's so many. And I think there's, I think there's like 14 of them or something like that. And, uh, um, but what a great, what a great Sunday school. It'll be a great book. You'll, you'll use the book the rest of your ministry. All right, we all in Matthew chapter 5. We're in the middle of the Beatitudes here. Look at verse number 9. Hey, let's all say it together. I prayed it in my prayer, but let's all say it together. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Isn't that cool? In ministry, the class is entitled Relationships and Ministry. You can almost read out of the class how to be a peace, a peace, a peacemaker in church. Okay, a peacemaker. Okay, a peacemaker at church. Let's look at this. In the history of mankind, we have never had more means to communicate. And yet we have had, and yet we have never had less meaningful exchange. Boy, that is so true. We've never had more means that we can communicate with one another, and yet we have such little meaningful exchange between people. Um, I, okay, I have never watched one of these all the way through, and I think I can say I've never watched the, any of them more than four minutes or so. But some of these programs, like Real Housewives of whatever, you know, I watch it for like three to four minutes and I'm going like, talk about meaningless. And I mean, they just like, okay, that was a total, like, what they talk about, they'll talk about a pet or something, I don't know what, but it's just so, and so much of our lives is such meaningless exchange. There, there's no reason for it, and it doesn't do anything for anyone. It's so self-absorbed. Okay, but here we go. These four statements must be said, these four peacemaking statements must be said with sincerity. If you don't mean it, you don't, by the way, if you don't mean it, don't say it. I'm telling you that right now. Don't be saying these four statements if they're not very meaningful to you and sincere and genuine. But I'll tell you the next word's important, especially in a couple of these phrases. Specifics. And we'll explain that in a minute. These four statements must be said with sincerity, with specifics, and then with an action. These four statements are not for groups. Doesn't mean you'll never apologize to a group as a leader. You will. But it's not that. It's not these four statements aren't for institutions or churches. But for what? Everyone together? Individuals. 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 The four statements you're about to hear are for individuals. And that is extremely, extremely important. 
Are you ready? These are powerful statements, and the children of God in America need to get a hold of this. I'm telling you, we're talking too much about Trump and not about peace. And we are. And let me tell you, I can't stand what's going on in our country. And I can't stand the way the election turned out. But I'm telling you, we need to start becoming peacemakers. Mm -hmm. And all the tension and hatred and anger um, and, and, uh, and all of these other groups, they're so mean and angry. Overcome evil with good. By the way, you're going to want to memorize that at some point. Number one, here are the four statements. Will you please forgive me? Will you please forgive me? Now, there's actually another statement onto that. What is the ending of that statement? Will you please forgive me for blank? Now that is the rest of the statement, and that is imperative. Will you please forgive me for my attitude towards you yesterday when you came in the room? The more specific you can get, you're asking for forgiveness the greater the resolution will be with that person. Mm -hmm. The more specific you get with asking for your forgiveness, the greater the restoration of that relationship will be. When the person understands that you understand what you did, then forgiveness restoration can be put together. The absolute two worst words you can ever use to go to be a peacemaker, this will start war, are the words if and the word sorry. Don't you ever go to someone and say this, hey, please forgive me if I did something yesterday to hurt you. Why have you not become a peacemaker but a war maker with that statement? Just a little word, if, Brother Shuttler. And Brother Shuttler, haven't you ever wondered, did, did I do something? Yes, I have absolutely wondered that. Okay, Marilee is absolutely upset with me. <laughs> but I learned early, 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 like probably the second week of marriage. I learned this very quickly. You don't go to Marilee and say, hey, Marilee, if, if I said something yesterday, I just want to tell you I'm sorry. <laughs> Emily, you think you got this answer, huh? Because you're not acknowledging what you did. You're, it's almost like you're saying, well, I didn't do this wrong, but I guess it offended you, so I'm just trying to basically code it over without acknowledging the problem. Yeah. Go farther than that. That's an absolute beginning answer. Lexi. It's not very genuine, because it's kind of just for your conscience if you're saying that, not really for them. Very good. Got two good answers. Add to it, though. Those are two excellent answers. Irina. Um, if they don't say what it is and they don't have any intention of fixing it the next time. Oh, those are three really good answers. Keep going. Keep building. I'm not, I'm not, th those are three great answers to, to what I just asked Max. In my opinion, you're basically calling them weak and emotional. It's like, if I offended you, or oh, if I did something wrong, <laughs> it's like, you may say everything wrong. You shouldn't be offended. But, I like uh, that too. You really are. I gotta tell you something. You haven't done a thing with the situation because you don't even know what the situation was. Mm -hmm. And so they're going like, whoa, if? <laughs> then you don't even get, you just, all you've done is throw gasoline on it. You haven't resolved the thing. Hey, listen, so listen. If you are at the point, because let me ask you, how many of you have wondered, did I do something to that person? But you didn't know what it was. 
Have you ever? Oh, I don't have enough hands. Okay? And, 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 but what does that, what am I supposed to do before I go to them then? What am I supposed to start doing? You know, huh? You guys have done so well. Yes? Pray about it. Yes, and pray what about it? For the Lord to reveal it to you. Yeah, Lord, I've obviously done something to Cooper, but I don't know what I've done to Cooper. But Cooper's not talking to me. The worst thing I could do, hey, Cooper, if I've done something, I just want to tell you I'm sorry. No, no, that didn't do anything but cause more problems. If I don't know why. I mean, like, Cooper's not talking. That's not my Cooper. I've done something, but what have I done? Now, can you ever go to the person? Yeah. Hey, Coop. I, I think you could say, we okay? That's, I don't think that's the you. Know, we haven't gotten to. You're not asking for forgiveness right now. You're not asking to resolve. You're asking a question. Are we okay? Oh, don't, don't worry about it, Dr. Shelley. Well, you know what? Cooper, I am worried about it. I don't want anything between us. Well, I don't know. I just feel sometimes you just treat me like, you know, like a doormat or something. Whatever. Well, Cooper, can I ask you when I did that to you? Well, I think you did it yesterday at the end. You know what? You're right. Cooper, would you forgive me for the way that I treated you the other day and specifically saying, and with that, are you guys with me? Mm -hmm. I can't tell you guys. The difference of this, and you guys, now, here's, here's the cute thing. You go to your little Faith Baptist Church, go to your little Calvary Baptist, mm -hmm. and, and be your little minister at First Baptist. And you can get away with not doing this for a few months. But I'm telling you, if you don't learn what I'm learning right now, you're going to have problems in ministry. Because these things are not getting resolved. Things are, people will do, they'll, they'll let it go for a little bit. But I'm telling you, you're starting to put stuff in luggage that you're going to start carrying around. Are you with me? I'm, this, it's a bigger deal than you think. Okay, so let's look at this. Number one, will you please forgive me? Um, you've got to get a hold of this. Uh, I, I didn't want anyone to read this one. I wanted us all to look this up. Luke chapter 15, who's this going to be about? Luke chapter 15, who's this going to be about? Luke 15? Prodigal son, you guys should know that. Okay, prodigal son. Verse 17, I'll start reading, guys. Uh, Luke chapter 15, verse 17. Oh, what a statement. And when he, who's the he? Prodigal son. Came to himself. Was he, he moving around in the mud in the, in the pig pen and he finds himself? Okay, what does that statement mean? He came to himself. What does that statement mean? Yes? He realized something? He realized something. Okay, I like that actually. That's pretty good. Pretty good easy. Anyone, anyone else want to expand on that? Yeah, Sonny. It's kind of like the idea of you're talking to yourself in a just like a self. Awakening, saying, what are you doing? Yes, but this is the key to this. Who's talking to who when you say talking to himself? Yeah, I'm, I'm talking to himself. What? He is talking to himself? Yes. What part is talking to what part? Jesus. <laughs> Emily, help him out. The Spirit is talking to his soul. Okay, when he comes to himself, that means the Spirit finally gets a hold of the soul. Because his emotions have been carrying him for, with everything that he's wanted to do. And he's finally come to himself. That is the spiritual part of him, which is the real part, the most important part of your being. And the spirit, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? That's the spirit talking there. Okay. And, okay, so, and, and when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, 
and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Wow, what humility. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, da, 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 da. and the son said unto him, look at verse 21, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Wow. I mean, he, there's so much involved with this, but he really acknowledges everything he needs to. Look at this. Acknowledge your sin. Anyone know what the blank is? Yeah, yeah. What? Specifically? That is exactly right, anyway. Specifically. B, you guys can all get take responsibility. responsibility for your part of the wrong. I love my students to guess what the blanks are. I just think it's so cool. I think that's what I would love to do. I'd be like, what's he going? But take responsibility for your part of the wrong. C, humble yourself by not, everybody together, what's that next word? Okay, listen guys, don't go and give reasons why you did it or why you didn't do it. Just ask for forgiveness. Now, she's, she's watching, but I could have easily told Andrea, when I called her last night, Andrea, you would not. I know she's not. Mm -hmm. Andrea, well, she knows what I did. And she knows what I said to her, and and I did not say, Andrea. I had a, you know, I had this going on, and I did this, and I spoke in chapel, and then I had my first two classes, and I, I did not do that. I said, please forgive me for forgetting you. That I for, I told you I would do something, and I didn't do it, and I just and I just laid it out with her. And, and, I, and she was so nice. She said, oh, everybody does that. No, that was wrong for me to do, okay? And, and everything like that. So. Our <laughs> 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 hamburger watching this. <laughs> okay, so anyways, humble yourself by not defending yourself. And then, and you guys all got this one. Don't say I'm sorry. Um, yeah, don't do that. Okay, everyone together, let's practice it so we know that our mouths can make it. Okay, make the move, the, the words, okay? Everyone together, will you please forgive me? Everyone together? Will you please forgive me? Look at somebody when you say that. Just look at somebody. Will you please forgive me? All right. Oh, wait, that's the next one. I sense a piece. Number two. All right, now listen to number two. What's number two going to be? I forgive you. That's hard. Hey, God. You know, we're not playing games here. I know, that's why I said way back, these four statements must be said with sincerity. By the way, don't you think statement number two is harder than statement number one? It is easier for me to go to someone and ask for forgiveness than to give it. Now we're talking about a divine act. I personally do not believe that you are ever more godlike than when you forgive. There is no act on this earth that you do that is more godlike than when you forgive. I really do believe that. So to say, I forgive you. Now we're going to get into that Matthew 18, so hold on to that. We're not even going to read that right now. Oh, but somebody's got Ephesians 4.32, right? Go ahead, Jesus, Michael. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Yeah. The basis to forgiveness is what Christ has done for us. With God, and then God received. He forgave me because of what Jesus did for me. That is the basis of why we forgive other people. We'll get into that a little bit more today. Um, now, here's my definition of forgiveness. You do have to memorize it. Um, so let's let's go through this right now. We'll go through it again in lecture three, so I won't spend a lot of time right now on it. Forgiveness is a choice of your will to erase a debt with someone who owes you. Well, I put down and, and living with the consequences of their sin by living. I don't know by. I think the word and is the right word there. Are you guys allowed to make changes in your in your notes? Okay, I would forgiveness is a choice of your will to erase the debt. That's so, okay. This ah, you know what? After after all these 
years, I just say it differently than this. This is the way I say it. Forgiveness is a choice of your will to erase the debt that they owe you by living with the consequences of their sin. So figure that all out with that definition. But this is fine. This is, by the way, you better know this one. You better fill it in just the way it is because this is probably what's going to be on campus. Forgiveness is a choice of your will to erase a debt with someone who owes you by living with the consequences of their sin. That's fine. That's not exactly the way I say it, but that's fine. I forgive you. Man, that is a, that is a peace make. Listen, you start forgiving people, peace and restoration is made. Number three is a really good one. I think this is the third major step of, of, of a peacemaker. Number three, I am listening. Now, notice the statements underneath it. Notice the statements underneath it because I think these are really important. This is what you don't say. You don't say, I blank what you're saying. No, I get Okay, all right, okay, that's, the, that's part of what we usually say. I'm going to say understand, but I get what you're saying. I don't you do that. You don't get what they're saying. You don't understand what they're saying. You need to listen to them. All right, I am listening. Don't say I understand what you're saying. Otherwise known as I get what you're saying. Number two, don't say, well, this is more than I get. Don't say I know what you're saying. I, I know it. I know it. Yada, 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 yada. I know, I know it. I know it. No, you don't say that. And number three, don't say, I, I, I've heard them all. I, I, I've heard it all. Well, you know, you haven't heard my story. And, and my story is my story. I'm just going to tell you this right now, guys. If you want peace, I would not tell someone, hey, I've heard it all before. Let's move on. Okay. It, it, it doesn't work. So, uh, will you please forgive me? Uh, look at the person next to you and say, I forgive you. I forgive you. Okay. Um, look at look at somebody else around the room and say, I'm listening. And then number four. What's number four? I love you. I love you. If we would just say that more, mean it. I don't have a report. You know what? No. Oh, no, we're going to do it in class. Oh, yeah. Wait, that's going to be the best one. Hey, guys, I really will tell you, if you can say that fourth statement to somebody, the bridge will, will change. I can't tell you how many times in my office over the last eight years where it just got bad. It just got bad. Sometimes my fault. Sometimes their fault. But, you know, we just stop. I've had to, by the way, not, not a lot, but sometimes I've had the student look at me and say, Dr. Shetler, I love you. Wow, I can't believe what that does. And then there's been, I think several times, where I've looked at that student and I say, hey, hey, stop here. This is not going well. And I want you to know, I love you, man. I love you. You know what? The whole thing changes at that moment. If you mean it, if you mean it, to verbalize Hey, I love you. Man, we can't be doing this. We're ruining our church. This is so terrible what's going on in our Christian school. Stop. Man, come on. I do love you in the Lord. But you mean something to me. And we're ruining our school. We're ruining our ministry. We're ruining our mission field. Because we have got, listen, I want you to know I love you. I'll tell you, that, that will the door. So look at someone. And tell them, I love you. I love That's you. tough. <laughs> That's <laughs> tough. <laughs> Brother Scheller, I haven't even told my boyfriend I love him. And I'm supposed to tell this person? Yeah, because we're supposed to love one another. Okay, our four peacemaking statements. All right, let's go to lecture three. Any questions on the peacemaking? Any comments? Any testimonies? Have you ever used these and go like, wow, these, I'm telling you that, these work, these work, or any any uh, any testimonies, comments, or questions? Um, mine is actually with my sister. For a long time, we did not get along at all. Like, it was constantly just butting heads, fighting. And when I finally, I think it was like a while ago, I finally sat down with her and I said, I just want to tell you that I apologize for the way that I've treated you and just, like, laid everything out. And it, like, shocked her and changed her whole relationship. 
I do think forgive is a better word than apologize. But I do like apologize. But when you, by the way, guys, this is how you restore. I go to Reese and I say, Reese, will you forgive me for this? Reese, I grant it. I just put a big thing on Reese at this point. But if Reese says, what words? I forgive you. <laughs> Let's go with I forgive you right here, okay? And Reese says to me, I forgive you. Do you know what? We're restored. We're restored. The peace has been made. At that point, that is just so good. So good. Any other comments? Questions? Yeah, I really know what you got. I have a question. What do you mean by, like, don't say I'm sorry? Yeah, okay, so listen. If I find out today that you got in a car accident, I'd come up to you and say, man, I'm really sorry to hear about the car accident. Hope you're okay. Okay? So sorry's fine for events that come into a person's life that you'd say, hey, man, I'm really sorry to hear about this. But you don't go to somebody. You have not resolved it. I'm sorry for saying the wrong thing. Is very different than, will you forgive me for what I said? See, there's a debt. The definition of forgiveness is erasing a debt. I'm sorry does not erase a debt. And, and, and Emily, with all due respect, apologizing doesn't erase the debt. What erases the debt? Reese, will you forgive me? Will you erase the debt that I owe you? I can be sorry that I heard about your parents. I'm, I'm sorry I heard about the sick. I'm sorry you don't have enough money. I'm sorry you got this great. Okay, I'm good with sorry there. But if there's something between both of us, Irina, sorry doesn't cut it. We will not get it resolved with sorry. I need to ask you to forgive me. I need a, a, a debt erased. So I've got to give you the thing that I, I Please forgive me for, does that make sense now? But sorry is a good word to use when you hear about something bad that's happened to somebody. We all on the same page with that? Reese? Whenever you're in the heat of like an argument or something, and like it comes to you that you should say, I love you, do you ever feel, okay. is there ever times where you don't feel it, you just say it and maybe expect the feeling to come later on? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so when you drop, because those are powerful words, when you drop the I love you, it probably won't be in the heat of the argument except for like this. Wow. You know what? We gotta, we gotta take a moment, we gotta take a stop here because you love me and I love you, and we're, this is not going well right now. And, and there's something big. So I could see, I think you take a deep breath, it is true though, guys, emotions don't dictate it. In other words, emotions will follow what you say. I think you still have to mean it. Can you mean something you don't, okay, well, here's, I think this is what you're asking, and this is a great question. Can you mean something you don't feel? Oh boy. Everyone stop for just a moment. Can you mean something that you don't feel? You can still love someone even if you don't feel like you love them. Love is a choice. It's awful. See, I think you can. So in that sense, you can mean, I do love you, but I don't feel it right now. <laughs> I just don't feel it right now, but I do love you. Okay, so I do think you can mean something and not feel it. Guys, feelings need to follow stuff, not precede stuff. And, and I, we get in so much trouble if we've got to have that feeling first. We're going to have real problems in, in relationships. But any, anyways, so I, I, I think it can be done. I think it, if it can be done in the heat of the argument, I think it will mean something. And I think that it will carry on the feeling later on. So I think we kind of a long time. That was actually a very good question. We good? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, say something like I oh, forgot your name. Please <laughs> forgive me. I'm sorry. It's Josh. <laughs> Josh. Josh. So say someone like wrongs you and you want to forgive them, but they haven't asked yet. What would you do in that scenario? Would you just go with the I love you or something else? So, all right. I want everyone to hear Josh's question again. Josh, go ahead. 
So uh, they've wronged you, and you want to forgive them, but they haven't asked for forgiveness. Okay, this is great. <laughs> Number one, make sure that there's not something you need to go to that person. And that the, you had, okay, so the, the problem is 100%. Here's the problem. Here, the problem is this piece of pie, or this pie, not piece. Ooh. This problem is the pie, okay? There's the problem, the conflict. There's one piece of that pie that you contributed to. Go and ask for forgiveness for that one piece, okay? Okay, then, but then you, you go, piece. You go to God and you say, Lord, I forgive that person and they don't owe me a thing, and it's done, and it's over. Hey, I've had to deal with people that held unforgiveness to somebody who died. Mm -hmm. Would you do that? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you do with that? And I think you still erase the debt, even though the person's dead. You may never see that person again, but in your heart, you don't want more. Because I think forgiveness is more your relationship with God. We are going to get into this in just a minute in Matthew 18. I think it's more your relationship with God. And so, Lord, I forgive them. They may never come and say anything to me. But, Lord, it's done. They don't owe me a thing. I'm ready to move on. That is a very, very good thing. But they never came to me and asked for forgiveness. Can I forgive them? Absolutely. And you got to. And you got to. Okay? Those are some good comments, class. All right. Let's go to lecture three. Forgiveness for fellow workers. Oh, yeah. All right. So, everyone take your Bible turn to Matthew 18. So, here's what I think. What's my first letter in my acrostic? What's R stand for? Reconciliation. Okay. By the way, who's got 2 Corinthians 5.18, gang? Who's got 2 Corinthians 5 .18? Listen to this. Because this is everything. This could be the basis. This could be the verse for our whole class. Relationships and ministry. Listen to what our ministry is. It says, In all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Dr. Shelter, I'm going into ministry. Oh, you're reconciled with that. Oh, no, I'm going to be a pastor. You're a reconciler then. Have them in the ministry. I'm going to be an evangelist. You're, your ministry of reconciliation is what we're all called to. So I do believe our, I, I'm not here to prove my first letter, but I want you to know the reason behind my first letter. Because here's what I think. McKenna works with me, so does Cooper. Let me tell you something. We, and a lot of times things change in our ministry, student activity, especially with COVID. And a lot of, there's a lot of balls in the air with the student activity, especially coming within hours. And we can get short with each other, okay? Mm -hmm. Everything's gonna happen. And, and you know, I'm gonna like, McKenna, why didn't you get this? Dr. Shelley, you ever sent me an email on it? Da, 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 da. I want you to know, I don't think this, I know that McKenna and I will work it out. Even though right now we're both upset with each other. I don't think McKenna and I will work it out. I never will. You know why I know this? You guys hear what I'm about to tell you. I believe this is the greatest principle in relationships. I can get along with anybody because of what I'm about to do. McKenna will never do anything to me worse than what I did to Jesus Christ. It's never going to happen. It will never happen. You know, she's going around the campus talking about rumors about you. You know, she's telling all kinds. Of, I'm telling you, your, your whole ministry is in jeopardy because of what McKenna's saying. I'm going to tell you this. I can get along with McKenna because she will never do anything to me worse than what I did to Jesus Christ. And guys, if you come into ministry understanding that, you will be able to get along with anybody on the mission field. You'll be able to get along with anybody in that church. Ooh, 
her personality is, oh, I, can, I can struggle with my pastor. Let, let me tell you something. You struggle with something else. You struggle with, you don't understand your forgiveness, what's been forgiven of you. And I'm just telling you right now, there will never be anything that will happen to you that is worse than what you did to Christ. And if you can, if you, if Christ can forgive you of what you did to him, based on what Christ has forgiven you of, hey man, I forgive you. I can move on. Are you with me? That I, I don't know of a more important relational truth. So um, we got a little problem going on in the church here. I know the church hasn't been established, but but Jesus talks a little bit about church discipline here in Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. And then we come to verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, uh, Ramona, uh, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Dramatic pause. Till seven times. I know. Peter, have you ever asked a question that you knew the answer to? Have you ever asked a question in class to one of your instructors that you'd be like, I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask the question and then I'm going to answer my own question? Okay, I love doing that. When I know an answer to something, I'm like, hey, well, what about this? Because <laughs> I know what the right answer is, all right? Well, that's what Peter's thinking right now. Peter's going like, I got this. Seven times. Why does he pick that number? You guys know? Number of perfection. It's the number of what? Perfection. Completion. Perfection. I mean, if you, if, if Jackie's, if Jackie's hurting me five times, six times, seven times, come on, who forgives somebody seven times for what they've done? I forgave Jackie seven. I'm done with it. Now, now I can just flat out nail Jackie. I mean, we're done now. Now it's war, girl. I forgive you seven times for what you did to me. Peter, he knows he's got the right answer. And then look at the Lord's response. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. What seventy times seven? Everyone together? Four hundred and ninety. So the four hundred and ninety-one. Then it's okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> four hundred ninety-one. So uh, when uh, when when Kyler d does something for the four hundred and ninety-one time. That's it then, right? No, that's not it. What is the purpose of him saying 70 times 7? What's he, what's he actually saying? Aaron, what's he really saying? Uh, it's kind of silly to put it. You can't really put a number on it, I guess. Right. No, 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 Peter. It's not 7 times. It's 70 times. In other words, Peter, you keep forgiving. There's no stopping to the forgiveness. Well, you know him, Peter. And those disciples are going like, whoa. I think I got, they got the same look on their face that they do about the divorce thing. They, when, 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 when they find out that there's no exception, the, 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 should we not get married at all? I just know the same look on the disciples on that one is the same. 70 times. You just keep forgiving? People just keep hurting you? And you just keep forgiving them? So Jesus gives a parable. And guys, this is the parable. This is the story, and this is the explanation of forgiveness in the Bible. This is it. The display of this is Calvary, okay? But the explanation of forgiveness, this is the passage on forgiveness. If I'm dealing with anybody on forgiveness, we're going to Matthew 18. Verse 22, Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee seven times, but unto seventy times seven. Therefore, is the kingdom. Okay, so let me explain this 70 times 7, Peter. Just like that, therefore is the kingdom of heaven, or kingdom of God in the other three gospels, the same thing. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven. By the way, oh, I don't think I want to do this, but I think I'm going to do it. <laughs> what is the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven? Okay, so Matthew uses the word heaven, or the other three Gospels use the word God. Anyone know why? 
Well, there's a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. No, no. Well, yes and no. We'll explain that in just a minute. Why does Matthew use heaven and all the other three writers use God? Yes. Uh, Matthew's written to the Jews. Yes. That's exactly right. And why then? You're exactly right. It's written to the Jew. And what do the Jews never do? What's one of the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not take the Lord thy, the, the, the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Seriously. So Matthew wants to be very careful not to use, just flippantly use the name God. So he uses the name, he uses the word heaven. The kingdom of heaven instead of the kingdom of God. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Okay, that's a sign. Oh, okay, now. So what is the kingdom of heaven slash the kingdom of God? What is it? Okay, let me ask another question. What are they? Does that help? We just put it in plural form. Okay, so I know this at all. Oh, we still can't see. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did 